Hello and welcome to part 7 of this series of uh, upgrade on an old game, upgrade time on Encounter. So last week uh, I did a quick demonstration on how to improve the, the system by having some audio, uh, but there were a major issue which was that all these effects were based on the weight instruction, which means that we could not really uh, uh, continue playing uh, during any animation while all these things were happening. So I did, uh, it's not definitive, but I did a quick modification to the soundboard. So, so you can see uh, part six, part six plus. Uh, it's basically the same, but I'm exploiting some uh, feature of the Auric Basic, which is that you can do some go to and go sub using variables. So the trick is, instead of uh, calling a, a function directly, we can have the sound effect made in multiple parts. So I made, uh, I modified the dog, and I created a new sound, the alarm, uh, to be able to be called multiple times and then return almost immediately. And another thing I'm using is the internal timer. So what the wait instruction in the basic is actually doing is to check, uh, compare the value you pass as a parameter to some internal function in page two, uh, which is uh, updated by the high frequency timer uh, of the auric uh, interrupted cell. So if you initialize the, this value 630 with zero, uh, this value keep decrementing uh, every 100 of a second. So you can use that to compare uh, with, uh, with the value and you will know the amount of time that is spent. So what I did is that I defined uh, two values, uh, one which is DW, uh, the delay to wait, and one which is a function to call when uh, this delay to wait has elapsed. So here for my alarm, you run in 900, which sets some uh, initial parameters doing beep. Initialize the timer, say to wait uh, 50, and then jump to 960. And uh, 960 does similar sound uh, with a different frequency. Reinitialize the timer, say to wait 100, and then to go to 920. Rinse and repeat. Uh, and this is just to avoid uh, some uh, bouncing, restarting the sound all the time. And here, uh, so when we start the alarm, go sub 900, which initially uses variables. And from then, since we have a value in DW, as long as this value is not past the decrement counter, well, it goes uh, reverse. That's why there is a subtraction. Go there. And when uh, this value is uh, finally uh, reaching DW, if we have a uh, a value in RR, then we go sub to it, which is how we jump from this one to this one to this one to this one. So this is what it sounds like. Um, it's still very uh, experimental, uh, and it's a bit uh, it's still not good enough for the performance. So the main difference is that this time I can type or not stuff, but at the same time, I can start my effect. So I'm going to start the alarm. Oh, no, the, uh, ah, the alarm is on. I can also start the dog. And I can still type. So as you can see, the dog effect uses a bit more uh, CPU time uh, and it impacts the way I'm typing. But it's mostly working. And I can zap. Uh, zapping shoot explode are still blocking instructions, but uh, it means that we can do the sound effect on music uh, while continuing to play to play the game. So. That was mostly it. Uh, I did not improve the way the jackhammer on things. I did not have time. Uh, so the dog 
Uh, let me see. So this is original dog sound, and this is how it is done now. Uh, so the original was doing a, a loop, uh, going from one to twelve, and changing the using the i variable parameters to set the music on play value. And when it was done, it cut the sound and wait a certain amount of uh, time and then uh, return. So this does woof and this waits. So uh, what this new value does is that it sets uh, a new variable, wf, which means woof, to one and set uh, the go sub instruction to uh, this, uh, well, actually, this is a bug. Uh, I overwrote it here. Uh, yeah, so this one is totally wrong. Uh, anyway, um, on set to uh, this next instruction. And what it does, it does music 13wf instead of uh, music 3i0. Uh, increment woof. And when woof is, uh, while woof is still not at 12, we return. When it's uh, bigger than 12, we set to zero, uh, we set our timer and we return. Which means that we have only one single routine, uh, but it's going to be called uh, with different parameters uh, uh, over time. So that's about it for this part. Uh, I also continued a bit uh, on the main game this time. And what I did is uh, to make it prettier. So this time I uh, worked on the intro sequence because it's very important to have an attract mode, uh, especially on uh, adventure games, which tend to uh, to be lacking of it. So here it's what it looks like. So press I for instruction and press any other key to play what's already there, but I added that, or wait a bit for the story. Because basically there were no storyline, uh, except uh, yeah, you need to find a girl. I remember it like if it was yesterday. My client had asked me to save their daughter who had been kidnapped by some villains who hide in a posh house in the middle of nowhere. I was given carte blanche on how to solve the issue using lethal force included. I parked my car on the marketplace and approached discreetly by foot to not alert them from my presence. So that's kind of a short intro and it's going to cycle, but I can also press I for instructions. And I basically rewrote the entire instruction page to be on one single uh, page instead of two. And I reordered things so they made a bit more sense. So how to play, your task is to find and rescue a young girl kidnapped by drugs. Give order using verbs and nouns, example empty bottle or get keys. Uh, I removed the part that said you can abbreviate on three characters, uh, hopefully people will be smart enough to understand. And I remove things about single um, letter commands and multiple letter commands. So here we have north, south, west, east, up, down, look. And I try to find all the verbs used in the game. I maybe missed one or two, but that gives you a chance to actually know what the vocabulary is, including the infamous risk, which I did not know. And knowing that there is siphon and blow, shoot, can give you some idea about what you can do in the game. On notes, everything you need is here, but you may have to manufacture some items. I removed the part about uh, you may need to learn chemistry. Uh, the mission failed if the movement or alarm counter which is zero. Drawing and annotating a map helps. So about the clue about chemistry, uh, one of the ideas I have is to actually have books in uh, the uh, in the library. Uh, where uh, the player will have some uh, recipes on how to do things like uh, bombs and uh, fuse and things like that. Uh, but yeah, that's about it. Uh, and then press indicate to key 
and we can go there. And I'm going to show you a few new pictures, which are still at the prototype stage. Uh, that one did not change, did not change. But now we have the lone tennis court. Well, obviously this part is temporary, but we have the side of the house and we can see that there is something back uh, on the back, which is the fish pond. So that give a bit of uh, coherence. I can go east. So this match the other side. And that's a, a new variant of the of the picture. Uh, the previous one was uh, no, part five. Mm -hmm. Ah, was a barred window, uh, which really annoyed me because it looked like from the wrong direction. So now it looks that we are still facing north and we still have the window but this time the window is on the left side which is fine because if we look at the big map so we are here and if you move up the stairs and turn left you reach here which give us this room there. So assuming that the uh, sun lounge is just behind here, I'm probably going to have a window here. Uh, it means that our girl, which is prisoner here, has a window on the right side. So get coherent with that. And she's going to escape from here. Um, um, that's it. Uh, it's all what I did. So how does it work inside the game? Uh, I think I'm just going to do a diff. Uh, going to be easier. Select left. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Compare. So uh, this is a small function I added, the typewriter intro style. So basically, uh, if there is some uh, uh, input character, we immediately return. Else, we go through the entire length of a parameter input string, and one character per one character, we read the value. We also check if there is any uh, input from the player. If uh, there is any key, then we abort and return immediately. Uh, this is to give something uh, reactive where the player does not have to wait too long. Then we check the type of character. If it's a CHR dollar thirteen, which is a carriage return, then we call uh, FP to A, which, if you remember, um, is one of the key clicks. Uh, else, uh, and we print uh, to go to the next line, and we wait a decent amount of time because it's a carriage return so it's a bit longer else we print the character with a semicolon so they all get one after the other and we call fb14 which is the other key click and then we wait some random amount of time not too long just to simulate a, a human being typing um, by changing this value we can wait more or less longer and more or less random so this function is called from here. Um, so I fill my uh, variable. I remember it like was it yesterday, blah, 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 and it goes up 5,500. 5, and I do that on all the lines. Some behind here in the posh house. Uh, and yes, I will have to do a pass on the grammar, on the style. It's probably terrible. Uh, if any of you have a better uh, suggestion of uh, text, uh, you're welcome. The idea is to have something that explains to the player why they are here in the first place. What do I do on this marketplace? Why is it deserted? What should I do? It was just missing that. And because each of these functions does as a first thing check for the keyboard uh, check if any of this uh, function has been uh, having a key they're just going to enter and quit immediately um, when we are at the end of the last message if we still have no keyboard pressure then we go back to 22. 
Um, so this is a new uh, print intro, so nothing special. Uh, I've just been poking around in the status bar. BB80 is the first character uh, on the screen uh, to put some yellow paper. And on BB18 plus 35, uh, I'm putting some yellow ink to hide the caps. Uh, I could disable caps by software, but then I will have to enable it later because the player will be entering lowercase command and I had to fix the code for that. So this is relatively easy. Um, press indicate to return, then get go to 16 and we go back here, which will display the title picture. Uh, this print CHR$17 is just here to disable the, the blinking cursor uh, because it's very uh, confusing to have the cursor on screen, um, especially during the typewriter mode because it goes to the next line before I actually do the click to go to the next line, so it was very weird looking. Um, mm -hmm, and I guess that's about it. Uh, so here, just to see it a bit better without the color. So simple function, nothing complicated. And simple function here as well. Uh, yes, uh, this uh, is also a, a trick. Uh, uh, if you noticed, uh, the typewriter, the, the main text is of a different color than the typewriter itself. So here we are on uh, blue text on yellow. Uh, and when the typewriter starts, you will see that the color are going to change. Now it's black on white. Um, and the way I did that is that I did it by poking uh, in the system addresses. You can see that in the Auric Advanced User Guide. Here we have 26B paper color plus 16, 26C ink color. And the reason I did that is that we are not in text mode, we are in iRes mode. Uh, if I use paper on ink, that will change the paper on ink of the picture instead of there. Uh, so by doing that, basically, I pretend to be doing the paper on ink uh, instruction from uh, text mode. So it's about the only thing. And it's important to do that. I could, of course, paint my line one by one, but uh, the paper will be flickering uh, when the text scrolls. So it's just some uh, quality of life things. Uh, nothing, uh, nothing special. So yeah, I think that's all for today. Uh, I wanted to do more, but uh, I've been busy working on these things there, which should be released sometime uh, next week or in two weeks. Um, hopefully uh, the game will be bug free, so I will not have to do too much uh, support, which means I should be able to uh, work a bit more on, uh, on the game itself. So, yep, I hope you liked it and suggestions are welcome. Oh, one last question. Uh, if any of you has any idea about where the people who created the 7 software are, which may or may not be Adrian Shepard and Mike Howard, uh, it would be nice uh, if you could uh, give a hint. Uh, I really, really like to be able to know how they came with the idea of the game and. Uh, on thing like that. That would be uh, very nice. So seven software here, uh, Adrian Shepard, Mike Howard. So have a good uh, day and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.